Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming to my session, a guidebook to contributing to open source software. And with this session, I want to get you excited. I want to get you inspired. I want to, yeah. yeah, that's it, that's it. And I want to encourage you to, to, to engage with open source. How many of you, how many of you use open source? Yeah, exactly, everyone. How many of you have contributed to open source? Most of you, great. And uh, if you did not know, Today you should learn what is native script. And how many of you use native script? OK. And how many of you have contributed to native script? Great. Now, no, no, keep your, keep your hands in the air. Now, raise the other hand. Great. We just doubled contribution to native script. <laughs> and yeah, we are good. <laughs> Let me present myself. My name is Vasil Chimev. I am a Native Script Core team member. Currently, I'm on a software engineering position, working mainly on the cross-platform models and application framework of Native Script. And I've been with the project since version 1.0, and now we are about to re release 5.0, which is, yeah, huge. And I have the chance to be part of how the, this project grows and how it evolves and the community unfolds, which is, which is something really valuable for me. And yeah, that's why I wanted to, to, to come today here and talk about open source. And in my professional experience, I've been, yeah, I've tried different stuff in IT, like I've been a support person in a service-oriented company. I've been doing work at a product development company, which is when I started at Telerik. Also, I've been doing open source for a while. And all of this have enriched my professional and cultural experience up until NativeScript. And with NativeScript, I have all of this together. And that's what really makes me happy. I can be happier at the moment. <laughs> and yeah. At NativeScript, and in general, I think in open source, you have like, yeah, the pretty complex technical stack, the vast knowledge of the core team, also the diversity of our community, and also the chance to work with all the best experts out there in JavaScript, Angular, Vue, et cetera. Yeah, just a few reasons to, to motivate me to work in open source, and th I think that they are valuable to share. That's, yeah, why I'm here today. So I really believe that uh, doing open source uh, can have a great impact, a positive impact in personal and professional growth for everybody. So let's take a step back and say, what is open source? Well, I don't really like definitions, but yeah, here is one. And open source software is computer software with its code, source code made available with a license. Yeah, this works. In which the copyright holder provides the right to study, change, and distribute the software to anyone and for any purpose. Yeah, sounds good. And we can talk about open source without mentioning licensing. And yeah, do you know, let's say we have a GitHub repo with no licenses. What we can do with this repo, with this repository? Okay, we can, yeah, we can read it, but with that license, we can do anything else. We can't download it, it, we can't modify it, we can't change it and deliver it as another uh, similar product. And yeah, the license is very important in open source, and there are very different kinds of licenses, like from the permissive ones, like Apache license version 2, which we use in native script, also MIT, ISC, and more and more. And I don't really want to get into this because it's a really serious topic and I don't want to be serious today. So here is this website, choose the license.com, built by GitHub. So 
I would suggest you if you need any information about licenses or just want to check out what's the difference between, yeah, go there and check it out. So, open source is really about doing software all together, like users, contributors, maintainers. But what's the role of the companies, the big companies in it? And yeah, in the end, all the companies use software, open source software, yes. As we saw, all of us use open source software. But still, I'm really happy that nowadays more and more companies not only taking advantage of open source, but also give back to society and decide to open source their languages, frameworks, tools, or any kind of projects. Let's take a look at Apple, for example. They have open sourced their Swift language, also WebKit JavaScript engine, right? Facebook, yeah, React front-end front -end framework, also plenty of other projects. Google, where to start? Android, Chromium, TensorFlow, Angular, of course. And not to mention Microsoft, with .NET framework, TypeScript, Visual Studio Code. And even more, Microsoft recently open sourced their patent portfolio, which is something huge. There are like thousands, yeah, 60,000 patents now available everywhere. And progress as a company is not an exception. It's worth mentioning that DataScript is the first open source project at, Nat of, at Progress, and nowadays, along with a few more, few more products, uh, our company has a nice portfolio and really, really embrace the open source. And that's why I think that companies understand that everybody benefits from open source. And companies, developers, communities, that's why they want to gather people, take their opinions, and yeah, once again, it's building software all together. Well, open source, of course, is not like sunshines and rainbows. There are some risks that it's nice to be aware when doing open source. Well, most of the people doing open source don't get paid. That's the common perspective, and yeah, I would agree with this. And, but the thing is that when you do open source, you, you can learn a lot you can get really good professional experience. You can also make it easier to be seen out there, to make impression to communities, to companies, to people. And all of this, I think, will reflect back to you at some point. Yeah, maybe not from financial perspective, but as a term of like new connections, new opportunities. And yeah, there is this feeling when you feel obligated to answer all the questions, to address all the issues and implement all the features on your open source project. And yeah, that's, this could be stressful, really stressful. And yeah, it's, sometimes it's not possible to have all, everything, all the work get done in reasonable time. And yeah, that's when you feel guilty. You feel guilty and yeah, this is like not a good feeling. You feel like not motivated enough and more. And this is how you go to burnout. Yeah, it's, it's pretty modern term these days, like along with X10 engineers. And yeah, these things happen. Actually, people close to me have been through this. And yeah, we really, try to advise you, take some free time, do some hobbies, spend more time with your close people, and avoid it. Well, it's not so terrible, actually. There are really, really good benefits from open source. And yeah, I mentioned the learning experience. Basically, there are like uh, billions of repositories out there. And thousands of them are really good quality on every type of, every type of subject, like front end, back end, mobile, Augmented variety, virtual reality, everything that could be of interest of anyone. So all this is out there, and it waits for us to 
to go and learn from it. Well, a lot of people learn from learn theoretical patterns from, from their practical application. So yeah, really going through open source repositories can be really beneficial experience. And yeah, everybody can learn a lot. But not only this, you can, yeah, read the source code, but you can also download it and explore it locally, try to modify it, try to change it, try to deliver similar functionality or build a yeah, competitive to the original product or project. And yeah, mention the licenses, they're pretty permissive once again. Yeah, just check out what's the license, what you can do with this source code, and yeah, just go give it a try. That's one of my favorite because with open source project, you can choose who you want to work with and not only as a project, but also with people. And open source give you the opportunity to work with everybody, it doesn't matter where you're located on the earth. And yeah, basically, it's, it's, it's based on cooperation between people, which is really important nowadays. And the best thing you can do when you learn, when you get experience, when you have the expertise is to contribute back. Yeah, this is how people find mentors or became mentors. And this is how all of us going forward together. And this results in increase in your popularity. People start to know you, start to ask you questions, ask about your opinion. You build kind of reputation, expertise in this field. And all of this work makes you new and really strong friendships. Like, yeah, we have the chance to meet today here and maybe communicate after communicating maybe online on GitHub issues and pull requests. And I would say that all of this, yeah, if it's not your dream job, it could lead to your dream job. It can make you the needed connections and opportunities to fulfill your professional career. Do you know who is this guy? Igor who? <laughs> yeah, this is Igor Ranjeovic. Uh, he's a student from Hungary. And he's the creator of NativeScript View. Um, I remember maybe around two years, two years and a, uh, and a half, uh, Igor uh, kind of contacted us, actually worked with Alex to prototype the render for native script view. And yeah, just a student who at this time was working part-time part as a front-end developer, a big fan of view, started exploring, trying to combine it with native script. And yeah, this is how native script view was born. And nowadays it's like not 1.0, but 2.0, which is like a huge success for this community-driven initiative because it's fact that it, uh, Igor, as a creator, and a few more guys from our community, they build it, they contribute it, and actually the core team of NativeScript has nothing to do with it. Actually, haven't contributed like huge amount of source codes, only just helping, consulting, and addressing blocking issues. and. After all this, I'm thinking about the impact that this thing have. And actually, I've spoken with Igor before this session in order to prepare for it, also with some other of our experts. And this is what he said, that he basically changed his professional career and opened a lot of opportunities for him. And the another thing is that it's something unique, unique actually, because uh, being a part of Vue community and NativeScript community, you build something new, which lets you kind of merge these two communities, make a common point, and let users build applications that you, that are yours from many more customers. Yeah, something huge. 
So, why to contribute to open source, in particular to native script? Well, huh, you are a user and want to get a fix, and maybe we are too busy to, <laughs> to do it for you. Well, actually, the first thing is to, to, to walk an issue, walk in an issue, and yeah, this is, this is the first step to become from a user to a contributor, and it's really helpful because even if you don't have the chance or the knowledge or the time to do it, maybe someone else who has the same problem would have the chance and do this for you. And it's really, really, really better to have the fix as part of, of an official release of framework because actually in some of our dependencies in the framework, we try to fork dependencies and apply local packages and with the upgrade of the, these dependencies is harder and harder to maintain them. So really, I, I would suggest what, when you have such uh, issues, just try to contribute whatever it is and make it part of the official release of the product. This, this will guarantee you that it's gonna be supported. And the same is for future features implementation. Well, I see a lot of people here. Some of you maybe are at the beginning of your career. Some of you maybe have like a pretty solid technical knowledge. In any case, there are a lot of problems that are looking for solutions. So if you're looking for opportunities to build expertise, to, to develop your technical skills, yeah, there are plenty of opportunities. And again, with all of this learning and working, yeah, everybody builds expertise, become an expert. Actually, we have our develop Telerik Development Expert Program, which I think also uh, makes sponsorships to our experts and yeah, helps them go to conferences and yeah, travel to do their job. Also, be part of the community. And how, how you can do this? How can contribute to open source or NativeScript in particular? Yeah, you can just walk an issue or comment on an issue, have a suggestion, have a comment, opinion. Yeah, everything is welcome. And yeah, the next step could be to open a pull request or discuss questions, ask questions, answer questions in Stack Overflow. And another, another step to became from a contributor from a user is to contribute to documentation. And this is, yeah, this is like the normal way and the, the way that most people take. When they build an application, reading the documentation, finding some, some issue with it, some wrong snippet, yeah, it's just go there, fork the repo, make a pull request and fix it. And as addition to the community topic, I really, <laughs> something that really makes me happy about working on open source is when somebody not only builds its application, but also associates with the project. For example, make his application a showcase for us. It's like proud of what he built with, with the project. And the same is valid for plugins or yeah, it's, it's not all, only about source code to, to build, yeah, to be a contributor. It's also like running meetups or workshops. Yeah, doing a conference talk, like some of our speakers today and tomorrow. Also writing blog posts, videos, courses, everything. And the thing is that, Yeah, it's not only community, but I, I would say family when people not only use your project, but also associate with it and contribute back. So don't be afraid. We are here to help. If you want to contribute, have ideas, fun issue, let us know. And I want to try to give you a simple example how to contribute. And yeah, let's see how it go. Uh, 
And first of all, I prepared a few links that I'm going to put in the slides and share it later. First of all is our contribution uh, page on the website where everything is kind of summarized, how to start. And as we talked about licenses at the beginning, there are a few more very important documents part of each repo. And really, we put a lot of efforts to, to have all of these documents up to date and facilitate people to, to work with all repositories. One of these is the contribution license agreement that everybody needs to sign before yeah, opening a pull request. And the another one is very important, code of community, which helps everybody, every community to be healthy. Well, here is again a summary of how to start with our documentation, our, our core package repositories, also our plugins. Where you can find us is like our community uh, Slack and also the yeah, Stack Overflow. Well, I was planning to make a real fix, but I think I'm going to skip it because not, I'm not, you'll not have enough time to finish it before 5 o'clock. And I would like everybody to go together to the cocktail outside. So uh, just we'll go through the documentation and try to make a simple fix. So this is our GitHub organization, NativeScript. Here is pinned our docs. And while preparing for this session, I find something that I didn't like. And yeah, let's try to fix it. And it's in our documentation. Hmm, perfect. This one. So. I was preparing a demo, demo for our grid layout and yeah, found out this part where we have like, yeah, I don't know what is this, but I suppose that there should be a link. And I don't know how it's happened, but let's try to fix it. And the best way to do this is this link here. Do you see it? It's improve this article. This link will lead us to the source of this page in GitHub. So here is the table yeah, that we need to fix. And how to do this? Let's first fork the repo. Yeah, I'm going to fork it under my account. Great. I just was the name of the page, so let's open it again. Okay, so it's docs. UI. Layout, layout. Great. So. Let's read this page. And as far as I remember, I would suggest that these links uh, should point to each particular layout that we have in, in the extended details documentation article. So let's take the first one. Here it is. And let's make it a link. Where is the flexbox? Here it is. Hmm. Well, I was. Okay, let's. Let's take the 
the absolute layout, which is on top. Well, I think we found another book. <laughs> Okay, anyway, I'm going to take this one and apply it here. I'm going to leave this as before. So let's review the change. Here it is. So every kind of these typos or wrong links and everything can be easily fixed through the GitHub UI. There is no need even to clone the documentation. So let's try to submit it. So I'm going to write my commit message. Mm, update absolute. Okay, I'm going to submit it in my branch. And now open the pull request. And when opening a pull request, yeah, it's great to follow the, the templates because it facilitates people to review them. So, or PR follows the guideline. Yeah, we didn't work an issue, but yeah, for such a small things, there there is no need. So that's it. And yeah, maybe some <laughs> some of us from the core team is gonna review it. Well, it's easy, right? And for more complex things, especially for documentation, we have built a local setup where we can download the repository and install Docker. It works really, really, really good. Uh, it's like basically starting a command. And yeah, downloading all the dependencies for like a few minutes and yeah, then it runs. Well, as we skipped the more serious demo of the models, let's get back to presentations because I have a few announcements for you. First of them is that the HTTP roadmap is still cooking for the next year. So, uh, yeah, you can fill, the, fill in the NativeScript community survey, and this is how your voice can be heard. Also, you can write, with, write in GitHub issues, and yeah, if you have any suggestions, issues. And we are running our first time contribution contest. Yeah, it's a or way to support first-time contributors. We have a Slack channel, which is Contribution Squad. So if you find something that's for you, you can, and you need help, you can contact us. We would be glad to help. Also, yeah, this is like coincidence that it's running together with the Hacktoberfest, which is like a global initiative for open source contributions. And also, I don't know if you heard, but there is a challenge of NativeScript and AppLabs with pretty good price, I think it's like uh, two or three thousand United States dollars. And even I heard that some of the core team members used the uh, long fight to here to start building the application, so there is not so much time. Hurry up. And yeah, all of this information can is available at all blog posts, so then has to to yeah, subscribe to it. And as I mentioned, the core team members, we are like around 10 people here, and I want to show, present all the people here so you can contact them and talk with them for different topics. Here is Alex, or more cross platform models and Angular Integration Master. Uh, next to him is sitting Emil, who is our <laughs> uh, Universal Soldiers, contributing, contributing all over the framework. My favorite colleague is here, Vasil. It's not because we have the same first name, but also because he's one of the guys behind the playground and currently running the 
under return time. Stanimira is here with us. We have this pleasure. I hope that you attended her talk on hot model replacement earlier today. It's really amazing. And she also uh, prepare, prepares for us all the code sharing stuff with Angular, schematics, webpack. Our COI guru is here, Rosen. So uh, in the sessions earlier, we had a demo of the new TNS preview command. Also, we are going to deliver a new interactive TNS create command. And all of this is thanks to Ross and his team, so you can thank you him personally. Uh, our support master is here, Nikki. Maybe if you've opened us issues, you should already know him, so we can, you can meet in person. Our specialist in the native script pro UI components is here, so Vladi, you can talk with him on the right side, right side, side drawer, also the rat list view. And also Theodore, who is our great contributor to the native script supported plugins and also one of the guys behind the marketplace. With this, I want to thank you and invite you to the cocktail outside.